You specifically bought an aisle seat for the plane trip. Maybe it's because you don't like sitting between other people, or you don't enjoy the window seat, or you simply value the convenience of being able to get up and stretch your legs during a flight, and at least having access to one armrest. The plane lands, completes its taxi, and the seatbelt sign turns off, signaling that it's now okay to stand up and disembark the plane. You're sitting towards the middle or the rear of the cabin, and you'll know that it will take a while before it's your turn to get going. So, you still want to sit in your seat and sort through the messages and emails that you received while your phone was off during the flight. Yet, everyone around you is already up and you're the only one still sitting and perhaps you're feeling guilty, as if you're blocking them and that you should get going too. If you ever felt that way, rest assured, you're not doing anything wrong. In fact, by sitting down and waiting for your turn, science tells us that you're actually helping the plane empty faster. How exactly? And what is the fastest way to deboard a plane? Quick aircraft turnarounds are critical for both airlines and airport operations. Based on data from trade group Airlines for America, every minute of delay costs carriers $74.24 per minute in 2019. In comparison, the same study suggests that each minute of a passenger's time is only worth about 78 cents. So one would wonder why passengers are in such a rush to get off the plane while the operators are behaving seemingly indifferent towards the chaos. Most airlines currently allow passengers to exit the airplane in an unstructured fashion, which means that they don't impose any rules on the order of which passengers disembark the plane. As soon as the seatbelt sign turns off, anyone can stand up and start making their way towards the open doors. That is, even if they wait for the seatbelt sign to turn off at all. According to a study published by the Journal of Air Transport Management in 2014, an algorithm developed by authors at Northwestern University suggests that a structured deboarding may actually reduce deplaning time by almost half on a full aircraft. The simulation models passenger interaction as they move from the back of the plane towards the front and assumes that passengers have their carry-on luggage stowed under the seat in front of them or in the overhead bins close to their seat. Based on the results of this simulation, it turns out that the fastest way to deboard a plane is to have passengers exit by columns, not rows. In this method, the passengers seated in aisle C will disembark first, from front to back, followed by the next aisle, column D, and so on. Depending on the size and occupancy of the aircraft, saving rates may vary between 5 and 50%. The rate of improvement is smallest when the aircraft is small and half full. As the number of the passengers increase, so does the rate of improvement. When modeled for the A320 and the Boeing 757 carrying more than 150 passengers, Deplaning time is reduced by almost 50% when the plane is full and about 40% when an aircraft is 80% full. It should be noted that the main cause for delay in the disembarking process is the delay associated with receiving stowed luggage, which is dependent on the size, weight, and location of the luggage. According to one aircraft turn time study, it takes about an average of 30 seconds to disembark per row in a 3-3 configuration. Assuming that an average commercial airplane has 24 rows, we can estimate that on average, it takes about 9 minutes to disembark a plane. Given that there are about 10 million scheduled passenger flights in the United States in a year, an average 30% reduction in deplaning time would save about 27 million minutes, or $2 billion annually, just in the United States. To put that into perspective, that's about 1% of the combined annual revenues of airline operators in the United States. Obviously, it's impossible to disembark a plane one column at a time. Many people that are traveling together may not want to be separated during the disembarking process. This also may not work with families or passengers with disabilities. This is the reason why most airlines, while they have a pretty structured boarding strategy, do not intervene with the disembarking process. They pretty much leave it to the passengers to figure out. The thing is, depending on where one sits, the average passenger will only save a couple of minutes even in the most efficient way of structured disembarking. Even if you exit the plane as quickly as you can, chances are that you'll be waiting for the rest of the passengers at a transfer bus or train, as many airports operate people mover systems given their scale. So all that time that you may have saved by jumping into the aisle early or trying to bypass people sitting in front of you may mean nothing unless the plane is directly connected to a terminal with a jet bridge with no other mover systems between the gate and the main terminal. Therefore, the best strategy is to relax and keep seated until the few rows in front of you are cleared and to not occupy the aisle at the same time to create bottlenecks.
as seen in this video taken by a WestJet flight attendant, which is a much more pleasant experience for everyone involved. Overall, deep planning experience may not be such an issue these days in the middle of a pandemic where aircraft load factors are significantly lower and people are seated further apart from each other with middle seats being left empty. But when everything goes back to normal, let's do each other a favor and don't be that guy who stands up as soon as the plane lands.